Okay, today we're going to talk about production systems uh, by product, lead by product, and these are called the POSH, the POSH uh, production systems. The first concept that we are going to review is line balancing, and uh, as Mayer says, uh, it notes that the purpose of the assembly line balancing technique are as follows. First of all, match the workload between assemblers, identify the operation bottleneck, define the number of workstations, reduce the cost of production, and set the standard time. When we are performing uh, the, balan the balancing of a process, the steps to initiate the study of, of balance of lines is the same as in any other uh, type of productive process that consists of first of all define and identify the tasks that make up the production process uh, then uh, the time needed to complete each task the necessary resources and the logical order of execution let's consider that we have this problem uh, an industry wants to structure an assembly line to produce a particular product requiring the accomplishment of 10 tasks and we have the, the time of process for each task in seconds and the predecessor tasks for each of them. We can establish uh, the flow of operations and this will look like uh, this diagram. And we have to talk a little bit about workstations. Uh, the workstations are physical space where one or more tasks are performed in parallel or in a convenient sequence that maximizes productivity. For example, this is a possible distribution. Uh, we are going to work in, in uh, workstation one, task numbers one, two, and three. Workstation two will take uh, four, five, and six, and eight, and uh, workstation number three will work with uh, task six, seven, nine, and ten. If we add the process time for each task, we will have 120 seconds for uh, workstation one, 66 seconds for workstation two, and uh, 88 seconds for workstation three. Another distribution and its times will be as uh, it is showing in this slide where we have uh, workstation one with only one task, workstation two, and uh, workstation three with tasks two and six, workstations four with tasks four and seven, workstation five with five, eight, and nine, and workstation six with uh, task number 10 and in green we have the uh, time for each workstation let's uh, have some considerations uh, the workstation work in parallel this means that at the same time uh, tasks are performed in each station the idea for the workstation is uh, to pass the in-step process all at once in the same time. Going back to the first uh, distribution, we have uh, that uh, the workstation once uh, does its uh, work in 120 seconds, uh, workstation two uh, performs it, its tasks in 66 seconds, and in 88 seconds, uh, the work is done in workstation number three. No workstation can pass the product until the next one uh, has finished its process. The result is that we are going to uh, end one product every 120 seconds and the system progresses to the lowest working uh, speed of the station. We can uh, look at this in the last uh, diagram and we can have uh, the, the longest time to to perform each workstation task it's uh, 120 seconds so this will be 
the velocity of the production. There is one very important uh, concept to uh, balance a line. This is the cycle time. The cycle time that we are going to call C is the time that each piece or product in a process remains in each station. It is the time that marks the speed of processing the product. Each time the cycle time is reached, each station must pass the product in process to the next station. And how do we calculate this cycle time? By dividing the production time available per shift uh, by the demand per shift or the production rate per shift or the production volume desire per shift. These are three different concepts that we can take into account to calculate uh, the cycle time. For example, if we want to produce 1000 units per work shift, we're going to have a volume of 1000 units with an availability of uh, 480 minutes uh, per shift, the cycle time of the line will be the, uh, the time divided in, uh, by the volume, 480 divided by 1000, this is going to be uh, 0.48 minutes per unit. This is the, the cycle time that we need to have in each workstation. Every 0.48 minutes we need to pass the work from one workstation to the other. If it's that simple, is it any good? Of course, in a typical case, it would be useless to establish a distribution of a station to produce, for example, uh, 90 units per hour if we only require 45. Because the, uh, this will change the cycle time from 40 seconds to 80 seconds per unit. We need to consider uh, the concept of downtime and is the performance measure used in a production line uh, balance problem. For example, the downtime is equal to uh, the number of workstations multiplied by uh, the cycle time minus uh, the, the adding of all the individual times of each uh, task. For this example, where we have uh, six workstations, we can uh, and having a cycle time of 60 uh, seconds, we have a downtime of 86. If we multiply the six uh, workstations by uh, times the cycle time, that it's 60 seconds, and uh, we minus the total time of every workstation this will give us a downtime of 86 seconds but we also need to uh, review some efficiency indicators the first uh, of this uh, efficiency indicator it's the, the, the efficiency of the of the balancing uh, line and uh, it's calculated by uh, dividing the total time into the multiplication of the number of stations times the uh, time of the cycle. For our example, this will be the total, the total time, it's uh, 274 seconds divided by the multiplication of six workstations and a cycle time of 60 times 100, we will have an efficiency of 76.11% and the balance delay is going to be the difference between 100 that will be the ideal uh, efficiency minus the efficiency that we have and in this time uh, we have a 23.89% of delay. So the uh, main uh, goal here is to minimize the downtime, to have a downtime of zero. And in terms of uh, formula, uh, if we uh, make the downtime zero and we uh, calculate 
the number of stations, the ideal number of stations. Uh, this will be the cemetery of uh, all the individual times divided by the cycle time. For example, let's consider this situation when we have, uh, again, we have 10 tasks uh, with uh, an, an operation time for every uh, of them and uh, the predecessor tasks uh, as the chart follows. And we are going to consider that we are going to produce uh, 1500 units per day and we have 24 hours a day to produce and uh, the, uh, it is asked uh, to us to calculate the downtime and efficiency me measures. First of all, we have the manufacturing route with the, the information in the, in the chart up here. Then we have some useful initial calculations. The first of them is the cycle time. We have 24 hours and we need to produce uh, 1500 pieces. So this will mean that we have 0 0.016 uh, hours uh, equal to uh, 57.6 seconds. If we want to find what's the ideal number of workstation, we add all the individual times. This, this will be uh, 274 seconds divided by the cycle time, 57.6. And uh, the ideal number of stations is 4.6. 757 stations. We try to uh, make this possible in our uh, workflow and we group uh, the individual uh, uh, tasks into five workstations and we will have an efficiency of 94.44 and a uh, delay of balance of 5.65%. Uh, uh, we have another example. We need 12 units in 12, 24 hours. We calculate the cycle time and the ideal number of workstations. And in this case, we have a 66.66% of efficiency with a delay of balance of 33%. Okay, now we're going to perform this uh, activity.